the relevance of hard power has been reaffirmed and it has shown us that where national interests are involved countries can go to war there was a sense so there was a talk that the conventional wars are passing but i don't think uh, i mean that that thought is no longer valid we need to be self reliant in so far as our defense requirements are concerned the nipat scheme which is a new way of managing your human resource i think it is a significant and a very progressive step once we get it right this is going to be a game changer hello and welcome to uh, raisina idea spot uh, 2023 uh, today uh, as we look at the world around us so we have seen the instrumentality of violence uh, war uh, hard power uh, bang in the back of global conversation it's part of international political discourse unlike any other time in recent memory recent history uh, and in some ways interstate relations are being shaped by uh, this uh, this ultima ratio of 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 uh, interstate politics which is uh, uh, violence and war and we have today uh, with us to discuss uh, the instrumentality of uh, of of uh, hard power how does it impact india's foreign policy national security strategies and themes around indian army uh, we have today with us uh, we are delighted and privileged to host uh, uh, chief of indian army staff uh, general manoj pandey with us thank, thank you, you sir for joining us uh, th uh, this evening uh, if i may start uh, this has been a very turbulent phase in international politics and in global politics in india's uh, regional politics uh, and as we look at the world around us we see uh, two uh, major events that happened uh, and yes. that continue to shape us one is of course uh, the taiwan straits crisis with that happened in the yes. pacific but the larger frame today is of course the frame of the ukraine war that is happening and the yes. ongoing ukraine war uh, it has it is teaching many lessons to many uh, entities around mm -hmm. the world when you look uh, at this crisis from an indian perspective what are some of the lessons that you draw out for from an indian army perspective or from the broader indian national security perspective thank you professor pan I think uh, from our point of view, there are very profound lessons at each level, be it the strategic level, or the operational, or the tactical level, from the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict. And I think the foremost issue is uh, the relevance of hard power has been reaffirmed, and it has shown us that where national interests are involved, countries can go to war. there was a sense so there was a talk that the conventional wars are passing but i don't think uh, i mean that that thought is no longer valid in terms of certain other lessons uh, let us say the duration of the war as to how long will the last uh, war, war last we already into the uh, second year now so uh, we'll have to prepare for all types of contingency and for a longer duration there's also an aspect of self reliance It has directly impacted us, and uh, I think one of the lessons is that we need to be self-reliant in so far as our defence requirements are concerned, so that our dependence on sub outside supply chains is minimised. The third issue is, uh, of course, war is a whole of a nation sort of effort. Not only the military, but there are other instruments which would directly get involved. It has also brought about the limitless potential of disruptive. technologies it has also shown us that uh, we need to be prepared to fight not only in the kinetic domain but also in other multi domain spheres such as cyber electronic warfare the space etc the influence operations the battle of the narratives that is another issue because that, that is another aspect which we need to look at so i feel these are some of the important lessons but like i said we'll have to examine their relevance in our context uh, and how how we can then adapt and uh, draw the right lessons so that's fascinating in some ways because uh, you mentioned a couple of things uh, but i think in in particular uh, technology is becoming uh, such a big driver of not only yes. the civilian space but also the military yes. space and when you look at these major conflicts around us uh, how do uh, how, how do these technologies relate to each other on the battlefield yes that has become a big issue now in terms of emerging and critical technologies how are we integrating them how is indian army integrating them into its thinking into its doctrinal concepts and and broader engagement with these technologies how how do you see that shaping up uh, going forward right like i mentioned these conflicts have uh, seen a game changing trend in so far as the application of disruptive or even niche technologies on the battlefield is concerned 
in so far as the indian army goes uh, it is introduction or adoption of these technologies is central to our capability development plans i think what is key is that we should be able to easily adopt adopt these technologies and strike a good balance between the old uh, and the new to that extent we have evolved our doctrine to be able to absorb these technologies and likewise we are developing our four structures so that the full potential of the disruptive technologies is actually we are able to maximize i'll give you a couple of examples in the field of artificial intelligence we have some very good projects which are currently underway where we want to use ai in terms of uh, interpreting satellite imageries uh, be it change detection so that you are able to compare satellite images at two different uh, you know timelines we are also employing ai for our intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance requirements as also in terms of intrusion intruder detection systems along our borders so these are some of the areas we've also established a center of excellence uh, for artificial intelligence another area we are very keenly looking at is uh, the qkd the quantum key distribution because we believe that has uh, very key applications uh, in the battlefield in terms of either secure communications uh, or a number of or maybe even the communications so we have couple of very good projects wherein we will again uh, utilize the qkd technology in terms of our military requirements what have we done uh, to absorb these technologies one in our professional military education this aspect of enhancing the threshold is another uh, one thing which we are focusing on within the country we have a very vibrant startup ecosystem we have very bright young minds so we wanted to leverage their potential so we have taken a number of initiatives in terms of having our centers in some leading academic institutes the government has come up with certain policies in terms of encouraging innovations we are hand holding these new startup uh, you know companies so these are some of the areas where uh, uh, we feel we will be able to fully utilize or maximize the potential of these new or niche technologies uh, so related to that in some ways is this question of uh, of uh, integration with other services yes. jointry Uh, and uh, as you know more than i think any, any, more, more than any of us is that contemporary wars more often than not are ba- battle spaces where joint yes. jointry becomes a critical yeah, yes. determinant of of mm-hmm. the outcome uh, how how is indian army uh, moving forward in that direction because there has been a lot of talk around us we have heard a lot about uh, integration theater command yes. etc yes. so we are mo- we are seeing that those conversations beginning to happen but i think incorporation of that thinking within the establishment how is that moving forward right you rightly pointed out as you move forward i think jointness and integration both between the three services is going to be extremely important to achieve the desired uh, battle outcomes in so far as jointness is concerned uh, it is to do with the cognitive domain or i would say it is jointness in spirit whereas integration is the functional aspect whereas you would want to integrate uh, your functional sort of domain such as maybe logistics communications training and certain other hr issues so a lot of work uh, is already happened on this some of it is ongoing but some of the key areas that we are now looking at is to have a joint capability development program so that we jointly develop the capabilities of all the three services we also are coming up with a joint operational planning process in terms of joint logistics some of the areas that we are or we have identified is a common maintenance philosophy common maintenance infrastructure common repair and overall uh, you know facilities especially in areas such as helicopters because these are being held by all the three services uh, including the supply or procurement of fuel which all the three services uh, require it in equal measure 
also for joint training i think there is uh, i mean lot of it is already happening but we are looking at more methods or more mechanisms as to how we can train jointly so this is happening in the operational domain in the logistic domain in the training uh, sort of domain as well as on the hr aspects perhaps another important aspect is to develop a joint organizational culture that is currently we uh, what we are focusing on so that we understand each other's capabilities each other's uh, constraints or limitations uh, method of doing business adopt each other's practices in a much better way uh, and that is i think the way forward and we have identified clear uh, deliverables as per a road map so that we become more joint and integrated to be able to face the security challenges of uh, in the future so general one of the things that you that you talked about at the very beginning was this this uh, the sense that one of the lessons uh, india is learning and perhaps other countries are that diversification is very important yes. that uh, Uh, and uh, this is also happening in a context where uh, indian government is prioritizing make in india yes so when you look at uh, you know the operational readiness of the indian army and when you look at the requirements of producing at home uh, creating a manufacturing defense manufacturing base at home yes uh, how uh, uh, you know how, how do you visualize the effectiveness of the synchronization between the two are we are we able to ab- uh, absorb the the fact that we are now increasingly sh- shifting our focus towards defense production domestically as well as our operational readiness uh, whether at the borders or elsewhere right so uh, if i understand correctly you are referring to the atmanirbharta initiative or indigenization and in my opening remarks i did mention of the importance of self reliance and that is a key takeaway from the recent conflicts so far as the army goes we are fully aligned and we are fully uh, complementing the atmanirbhar initiative or the make in india initiative and we find a number of advantages uh, in doing so because if you have more secured assured production sustenance support that is something which is uh, always desirable uh, your local industry uh, is better able to understand your operational requirements so that is second we are also focusing on the r and d because that is key you cannot always depend on the r&d from outside and hence there is this impetus and focus on and uh, as you are aware uh, certain percent of the defense budget has been earmarked for development of r&d by the private industry so as part of this entire exercise uh, the services we are playing our role well be it in terms of hand holding of the industry be in terms of facilitating certain trial testing procedures and engaging with the industry better so that uh, i feel we should now move from a buyer seller relationship to a one of partnership and combined with this is also the aspect of uh, you know disruptive and niche technologies we believe there is uh, plenty available within the country and combined with the atmanirbhartha Uh, we think i think uh, it's going to be a win win situation so our mantra as we go forward will be indigenize to modernize so uh, both i think will complement each other as so a general we are running out of time at last question if i if i may uh, start uh, with uh, if if i may conclude with is about uh, the agnivir scheme i yes. think one of the problems that uh, that uh, the indian uh, defense establishment has often faced is this Uh, hr problem that there is a big yes. uh, component that goes into managing yes. this uh, yes. this huge uh, uh, population of of soldiers yes, that yes. you have to manage now how do you look at this uh, the agnivir as a solution to this what has been the reception so far and do you see this scheme being in any way uh, if, uh, you know creating some problems for you or is this something that has seamlessly been absorbed by the security establishment in the country human resource is key in so far as militaries are concerned not when standing the improvements in technology and doctrine and uh, everything else and to that extent i believe the agnipath scheme which is a new way of managing your remo- human resource i think it is a significant and a very progressive step thing which was long overdue 
after initial apprehensions and i need not go into the specific fix of the things there is tremendous amount of positivity both within the military as well as outside and i must mention that the training for the initial lot of agnivirs has already begun from the reports and from all the feedback that i have received from our uh, centers there's a lot of positivity there's a lot of enthusiasm uh, among the youth who have joined so i'm uh, convinced that i think this will something uh, uh, which will uh, you know be a game changer like i said thank you sir it has been fascinating to talk to you i think this is a turbulent period in global security and uh, this is a transformative phase within yes, the indian security yes. establishment as well uh, and uh, all the changes that we have discussed today are also bringing new energy new vigor yes. and in some ways a new structure to the way india has looked at its national security apparatus and the way indian security establishment is responding to it Very so thank true. you once again for joining us thank you week.